In today's episode, we're going to talk about The Mulligan, a new faith and family film about second chances. Welcome to 15 Minutes with Chuck, where we feature interviews with music artists, entertainers, scientists, and more. Here's your host, a software consultant, teacher, and space enthusiast, Chuck Fields. Hello, thanks so much for joining me today. Today we're going to talk about The Mulligan, a new movie that I know you'll love. The Mulligan is an inspiring story about relationships, forgiveness, and second chances. In this movie, Paul McAllister, played by actor Eric Close, seems to have it all as a successful businessman, but then his life starts to fall apart. Guided by the wisdom and advice of an old golf pro, Paul learns about playing a good game both on and off the golf course. Lead actor Eric Close joins me today to discuss this amazing new movie. Eric is best known for his roles on the CBS mystery drama Without a Trace, the ABC musical drama Nashville, and the movie American Sniper. Showtime. This is the Callister International. I set you up with a heavy hitter coming in from Asia. You get to play a round of golf on national television and connect us to the $20 billion man. Would you have time to talk about some business ideas I have? Please. After I meet your family? I have a son who hates me. God's warranty on dad coming back has expired. And my wife and I have been separated for about five years. The game of golf and life have a lot in common. Paul, there is somebody here who I'd love for you to meet. Are you the old pro? Well, I am old. What do you hear about my game? Your life is in the bigger mess. You have no idea how much I sacrifice to provide for our family. Some things aren't worth sacrificing. Sounds like you could use a mulligan. I'm not good at asking people for do-overs. Oh, it's not about doing. It's about believing. Welcome to the motocross regional. You're going to do great. Jake was in a motorcycle crash. He's moved in with me to recover. Sometimes God uses seemingly bad things for good. I believe things are going to change with me. With us. This never was about golf, was it? When was the last time you drove like this? 20 years ago, I guess. Back when I still had my license. <laughs> 15 Minutes with Chuck. Eric, thank you so much for joining me today. Good to be with you. Thanks for having me on. Well, it is a pleasure. Now, I tell you, I really love the new movie, The Mulligan. I think it's just a fantastic movie. I love your role as Paul McAllister uh, and the amazing message behind it. I was just wondering, in your own words, can you kind of describe the movie to our audience? It's the story of second chances um, in life. And the lessons are... Uh, taught through the game of golf so um but at its core it is a story of second chances and a redemption story and a feel-good story you know it is good too and i have to say i was really impressed with which all the acting i mean not only your acting which is incredible of course but i mean working alongside pat boone what, what was that like yeah pat's a legend and um you know you mean, I've met a lot of people in my life, but one thing I can say about Pat is he is ap he is as real as they come. He's genuine. He's incredibly transparent. He's he's an authentic human being. Um, he doesn't put on any airs. He's just he's just a great man of integrity. Uh, I, I I admire him because he sticks to his word. Sometimes even um, you know when he gets criticized for his faith or whatever that is, he's just mm -hmm. very. Uh, steadfast. And I admire that in, in someone who's not wishy-washy. He doesn't apologize for who he is and what he believes. I tell you, that is an incredible, unfortunately it's rare, but I mean, I think it's just incredible that, that he's that way. And I wish more of us were like that. Um, one thing I was thinking too about, you know, as I said, the mulligan is there might be some uh, audience out there who maybe aren't up on golf. So what is a mulligan for those out there? It sounds like your game could use a mulligan. Taking a mulligan is cheating. I play by the rules or I don't play. That's a great question. Um, you know, uh, a mulligan in the game of golf is uh, a second chance. So the way it works is by the rules of golf, you can't take a mulligan. If you're playing in a tournament uh, or a competitive round of golf with your buddies, there are no mulligans. You got to play by the rules. And, and the rules of golf have 
stood the test of time over 700, almost 800 years that these rules have been around. Now they've been tweaked a little bit, but pretty much for the most part, they, they are the same. And that's what is a game of integrity. When you're playing with your buddies, you're having a good time and you're just out to have fun, which golf should be fun. Mm -hmm. And we're not playing, we're not playing it for a living. Um, Sometimes your, your buddies will give you a, a mulligan. If you have a bad shot, they'll go, Hey, take a mulligan. And it's a second chance. And in this movie, I, we, that concept of a mulligan gets translated into life and a relationship with God, that God is a God of second chances where, you know, we play life and life doesn't always work out the way we had thought it was. And I would say for anybody that that's the way it is. And sometimes we feel like we've messed up so badly or our life is going in a direction that we just don't have any hope. And the message is, yeah, we do have hope and that God offers not only one chance, a second chance, but many, many chances and to make things right. Um, and that can cover a myriad of different issues. So that's what a mulligan is, is a second chance. See, and I do love it. I love how the movie does that without too, giving too much away. I mean, it goes into a great uh, deal about the relationship between uh, your character, Paul, and, and his wife and his son and his business as well. I was just wondering, did you feel sort of a personal connection to the role? And, and you know, what was most difficult about playing Paul McAllister for you? Well, I'm, uh, I'm, a, I'm very fortunate in my life, the relationship I have my, with my wife and daughters. Uh, you know, my, my wife and I are getting ready to celebrate our 27th. Well, we just did celebrate our 27th anniversary. Congrats. Um, and we, we, you know, take great care of our marriage. We love being married. We're best friends. And we, you know, we, so we certainly enjoy that. And I'm not estranged from my kids, <laughs> thankfully. Um, we've had our moments where I'm sure they wanted to be estranged from me. But uh, all in all, um, I, I'm, I'm very fortunate. And, in, and Paul, uh, his priorities are, are out of whack in the sense that he's, a, he's actually a decent guy. He's a good guy. But the thing that he struggles with is pride. And in, 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 in his wounded, in, in his wounded soul, he's trying to fill a hole in his, in his soul um, by working and being successful at work. Nothing wrong with being successful and working hard, but what ends up happening is he ends up, it's at the cost of his relationship with his wife and with his son. And so, you know, I, you know, I, I don't know that experience, but I can certainly imagine what that would be like to not have my, my want to have any sort of relationship with me or to see my marriage falling apart and thinking, boy, I'm doing the right thing. Why is this happening? And I think when Paul sees where his priorities and his balance in his life are uh, out of whack and he learns that he can adjust that and make, make some different choices, uh, you know, that's where the story really makes a, a, a turn and a hopeful turn. So, you know, I love playing the character of Paul. Um, we do have, you know, we do have, there were things about the character that I could relate to definitely. Um, and so I could relate to that sense of him feeling sort of lost and isolated and missing like, what's going wrong. I mean, I feel like I'm doing the right thing. And so, yeah. Um, but I, I enjoy the character and I love playing the game of golf. It's uh, one of my greatest passions in my life is the game. I, I've been awesome. playing for a long time and it's opened so, opened so many doors for friendships and fellowships. So it's it's an awesome game. That is so cool. I'm so glad to hear that you're into golf too because your character was believable enough. I mean, I, if you didn't hit a round of golf ever, I still would have believed that Paul McAllister is the greatest golfer ever on the planet. Um, I do <laughs> want to get, if I could, Eric, if I get just a little personal and uh, I just want to dive into this because I, I can relate to, to your personal story from what I heard uh, is that you, you know, became a Christian as a teenager uh, and then fell away as a young man. I mean, I've, I've done that too, uh, but you turned back to God. And I was just wondering, can you share, will you be willing to share what drew you back to the Lord? How'd that happen? So just a little backstory. I was, you know, I grew up in a family. We went to church on and off. You know, my dad was an elder in the Presbyterian church when he was younger. My mom, came from communist Hungary. So there was a lot of wow. conflict there because they were, you know, weren't allowed to worship God, but she had my mom's uh, heritage. There are pastors in her family. So I think God was in a part of our family, but you know, with three boys, my parents were raising all into sports. It was hard to find time to go to church. And so when I was 13, my parents sent me to a, um, a, a Christian junior high and that's where I came to faith. Um, 
thing that resonated with me about Jesus is that he loved everybody. It didn't matter color, their skin, any of those things. It was just, he loved people. And I was like, yeah, I can get behind a guy like that because, you know, when you see people being discriminated against or whatever, you know, it's just hard because I know my, my mom went through it when she had to, you know, escape her homeland. Mm. But like a lot of us, you know, we come to Christ and then we're, we suddenly, we hit our teenage years and go a little wild. And, you know, I did that. And um, to answer your question, I had uh, throughout my college life, my high school and college life, um, even though I had walked away from God in many aspects, there was still a deep uh, longing to have that relationship, just didn't know how to do it. And I thought I wouldn't be cool if I was, you know, following God more closely. And so I, I was definitely longing for it. And it just, I didn't know how to put it into words and really what that was. And when I graduated from college, you know, and entered the, out into the real world, um, I remember just a, partic a particular day in my, I was sitting in my apartment alone and the second hand on the clock was kind of ticking by one second at a time. And I was looking at the clock and I just felt very lonely and kind of like lost, I guess. And I just, I, I, I every time that second hand moved on that cheap old clock, I thought, man, my life's just ticking away a second at a time. What am I doing? And <clears throat> I remember this is the exact thing I said. I said, God, I don't know if you want to have anything to do with me, but I miss you. That's all I said. I don't know what else to say, but I just say, God, I, I don't know if you want anything to do with me, but I miss you. And that, that was my prayer. And I, I kid you not from that day forward, it, it was no question that God started opening doors saying, I do want to have a relationship with you. One of the first things that happened was I met a guy that I was doing a play with who was uh, going to um, a church in Altadena and he, I invited myself to go. And I was the only white member at this church. It was an African-American church in Altadena, and I joined there, uh, and that was just an extraordinary time in my life. Um, early in my acting career, I was just starting out. My two younger brothers ended up joining, following me there, and uh, so that was a, a, a great foundation, and I will say the thing that really resonated with me at this new time in my life and a relationship with God is it really became personal. And I wasn't necessarily afraid of God anymore. I had a healthy fear of God right. and his awesomeness and power. But I, I, I felt a, a loving God as opposed to this sort of judgmental God that I yeah. chose to commit, commit the rest of my life to. And um, it's, you know, they, they, they equate a, a relationship with God like a marriage and a marriage relationship and where you have to trust and have faith and, and you know, not be so... Uh, uh, judgmental in, you know, and so I, I just found that new relationship was much more uh, uh, peace filled, joy filled, um, and a great, a, a great step in my life and the new direction I was taking and everything that's happened since then, even through hardship, you know, I lost my brother in December to cancer. He was my oh, best friend so and I, I'm my closest, closest friend, but through that grief and all that, I knew that God was right there with my parents and I and my other brother and, you know, all of us. So anyway. Oh, thank you, Eric, for sharing that. Cause that's so true. You know, I, I think a lot of us need to understand, you know, God is, is loving and, and he's there for us. All we have to do is, you know, knock and the door will be open. So thank you, Eric, for sharing that with us. If you're enjoying this interview, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for listening. Uh, you you right. mentioned acting. Right. I kind of want to go into that because you have this phenomenal uh, career as an actor, director, and writer. Uh, how, how did you get into acting? Where'd that bug come from? Well, I, I did some plays when I was a kid and um, I, I knew that my mom had wanted to be an actress when she lived in Hungary, but it just wasn't, it wasn't meant to be for her because of the circumstances there and what they were facing. I knew that it could be a thing that possibly I could get a career, but on stage, I, I enjoyed the acting and I love the applause. <laughs> You know, when you do a good performance sure. and walk off the stage, everybody claps. You're like, well, that's kind of, it feels you good. You got applause? Got I, I just got booze. So <laughs> uh, I may have gotten a few tomatoes thrown at me, there but um, I don't know what was about that. Uh, what ended up happening was uh, when I graduated from college, I was pursuing a career as a director. I wanted to direct. So I was really trying to get my foot in the door on the production side, but I kept getting asked by people to act in their films. 
their student films and their music videos and whatever. And so I thought maybe God's calling me to be an actor. And so that's when I really kind of took a, 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 I took a pause and I really took a look at, is this what I'm really called to do? And I took an acting CLA to kind of explore it. It was called the business of acting. Gucci, who was um, one of the actors in the movie Grease. And it was through that class that I met, I met Howard Fine, who's a wonderful acting teacher in Los Angeles. He teaches all over the world now. He's very renowned. And Howard, um, I networked with Howard. And he invited me into his studio and I started studying there. And that kind of was the beginning of me really embracing a career as an actor. Yeah, folks, it's, it's really important to support these family friendly movies like the Mulligans. So, you know, Hollywood can see the response and do more of them. Uh, the Mulligans now available. Uh, on demand at Amazon Prime and Apple TV. It's also available on DVD. For more information, I encourage you to go to the website, getamulligan.com. Eric, I just want to thank you so much for taking time of your busy schedule to join us today. Thank you so much. Yeah, I really appreciate it. And uh, thanks for your time. And I hope everybody enjoys the mulligan. 15 minutes with Chuck. Well, I really enjoyed my conversation with Eric today, and I'm loving the movie, The Mulligan. You should definitely check it out. If you'd like to learn more, just go to their website, getamulligan.com. I want to thank Eric for joining me today. I want to thank you for joining me as well. If you can do me a small favor and share this episode with a friend, we'd appreciate that. Thanks so much for joining me. We'll see you next time. God bless.